Hello everyone, and welcome to a different kind of video, a video I don't normally make. And I wanted to make this video to start off this brand new year, it was originally going to end off last year, but it's going to start off this new year being a little video about me. I don't really talk about myself too often, and I feel like over the past year we've grown so much, and I feel like y'all don't really know that much about me. Um, so this isn't going to be an HHM video, this isn't going to be a theme park video, at least not specifically. Um, it's going to be more just about me, a little bit about myself and my sort of history with theme parks, history with YouTube, um, and uh, you all also sent in some questions in the community tab, um, which I'm going to answer, as well as just give some kind of updates as to what's happening with this channel in 2024. So lots of stuff to talk about, um, but let's just take it back a little bit and uh, talk about me. So I guess the best thing to do is start with an introduction. Hi, my name is Aiden. Um, I don't really say that too often in the videos, but if you follow me on other social media accounts, you'll know. My name is Aiden, and uh, I'm currently a senior in college. I'm doing these little funny videos on the internet about theme parks and HHN, theme park history and stuff like that. My sort of story with theme park history is funny because I can't really track like one thing that specifically made me want to pursue theme park history or like talk about it a lot. I guess other than going to the theme parks a lot. I grew up here in Orlando, Florida. Um, as a kid um, so just naturally you're kind of exposed to the theme parks theme park culture is kind of inescapable here um, it's something really interesting that I feel like only uh, people that kind of live in a certain proximity to theme parks especially here which is like the tourist capital uh, theme park capital of the world um, you know it's it's kind of an interesting thing when pretty much everything you see all the ads you see billboards and everything are all talking about the major theme parks Disney Universal SeaWorld and I grew up kind of going to Disney and just kind of being around Disney a lot um, but also I took an interest towards like the history part of it a lot of people you know like the big roller coasters and like the big thrill rides and the big e-tickets but I was someone who kind of found interest in things like the people mover and things like living with the land and, and places like Epcot and the original MGM Studios and I read a lot of books about Disney history and that just kind of led me to being interested about theme park history and theme park history on YouTube about 10 years ago, I started making videos on YouTube. They weren't theme park related. They were more like gaming videos. I was actually I was actually a little bit of a gamer back in the day. And you know, as I kind of grew up, I, I was off and on on YouTube and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do until I got really back into theme parks. Once COVID happened pretty much after COVID, um, I really got back into theme parks. And around this time in about 2019, um, I got a Universal Pass. I had gone to Universal as a kid, and, you know, so-and-so. Um, I went with family and things like that, but it wasn't like I would uh, be at Universal all the time. I didn't really have a huge interest in Universal really until I got into Harry Potter um, and found the Wizarding World as kind of like my in to Universal. And like I said, after I got my annual pass, I really started to go to Universal and appreciate the other attractions, things like E.T., Men in Black, these attractions that I kind of vaguely remembered as a kid, um, but also like new stuff that had just kind of been coming up around that time, things like uh, Skull Island, uh, Jimmy Fallon, Transformers, a lot of sort of those newer attractions, the attractions that get dogged on a lot, um, I actually found a great interest in them. And I don't really think they're the worst attractions in the world, if I'm honest. So yeah, I was going to theme parks a lot and wanting to make videos on theme parks. So it just kind of meshed into this thing that we have right now. And of course, about a year or so later, here we are, 1.85 thousand subscribers later, which the, the fact that we've amassed over 1,800 people watching these videos is absolutely insane. I, I, I can't even believe it myself. Um, and I'm just hoping for more bigger and better things to come in 2024. But before we talk about what specifically is coming to 2024, I got some questions um, that I want to be answering for you guys that I left in the community tab. If you're not looking out for that community tab, uh, be sure to, because I put a lot of sort of polls out there, um, not just like random polls, but polls about videos and upcoming stuff. So make sure to check the community tab and also follow the social medias down below, a little plug for them, but I'm on them a lot, especially, especially Twitter or X, I guess, that app. I'm on that one a lot. But anyway, let's get into some of these questions. Now, the first two questions were asked by Sebastian, who asked these a long time ago. I plan on making this video a long time ago. So Sebastian, if you're still watching, thank you for being so patient with me with the questions. Uh, but the first question is, what is your personal favorite attraction at both Universal and Islands of Adventure? So if you know me, you probably know my favorite uh, attraction from Universal Studios is E.T. Adventure. I talk about that ride all the time. I try to ride it at least once every time I'm there. The animatronics, the sets, the smells, everything is so phenomenal about E.T. Adventure and I love it so much. And as far as Islands goes, I think my favorite has to be Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. I just love how the screens and the big 
practical sets and effects really blend together in a way that I really don't see in many other attractions. So yeah, for me, it's gotta be E.T. at Studios, Harry Potter Forbidden Journey at Islands of Adventure, and I'm not sure any other attraction at either one of those parks is gonna top that. And the next question is, of the many, what is your personal favorite aspect of HHN? Really making these videos is a whole lot of fun, but just kind of the atmosphere of the event. Something I tried to do this year, and I really, really wanna do next year, is really showcase the ambience and the sort of atmosphere, because the atmosphere at HHN is unlike anything else. Just the music, the sounds, the lighting, uh, sort of the vibe around. It's a completely different atmosphere than Universal Studios Florida normally, and it does change from event to event. So I think that is my favorite part of HHN, just kind of being there. I could literally sit on a bench, and which I did, just sit on a bench in a scare zone or even in a place that's not like directly tied to a scare zone like Central Park or Richter's and just kind of look out at the park and just take it all in because it is really special in that way. So I'd say the ambience and also making videos about the event because it's really fun. Okay, and then Colby asked three questions. The first question is what IPs, intellectual properties, do you think we're getting for HHN this year and what originals? And I would love to answer that question for you right now, but I actually have a video on that coming soon. So I'm not gonna talk about that one right now, but good thing uh, they asked a couple more questions. Do you ever think they'll bring back a 3D house? Now, uh, if you haven't seen it already. Um, Vosh and I made a video about 3D houses and sort of the history of them and I think it's kind of uncertain but I do think there's a possibility of them bringing back 3D houses. Um, there is kind of the worry of like will people steal the glasses but I don't think that should be like the deterrent for them trying another 3D house. I think it's just is the way of making it going to work for that house, for that original. I think it could be a bold risk that they take. They could try it again. I know Lunatics Playground, which was the last one, uh, did not fare very well, but I think if they do another one, I think it could be good. It could be a very solid um, addition. And then what other gaming franchise would you want at HHM besides Silent Hill, The Last of Us Part II, or Resident Evil? Um, my biggest one, and I've said this in some live streams and also my dream map video, I would love Bioshock to come to the event. It's not like specifically a horror game, but there are some pretty spooky parts of that game um, if the atmosphere is quite right. And I think that's the thing about video games is like you have to pick one with a good atmosphere. And I think Bioshock has a really cool aesthetic. It has some really cool music, maybe some water effects. If they want to try that again, um, I think Bioshock would not be a bad one for them to tackle. And then Nate here asks two questions. Um, the first one is, what is your most unrealistic dream IP for HHN? House you'd love to see, but has like a near 0% chance of ever coming. I think my biggest one would probably be a uh, Batman, but specifically, Tim Burton's Batman. That is my favorite Batman put to screen. I love those original two films, Batman and Batman Returns, and also kind of like the spin-off comic. I think just taking that world built by those films is so dark and dramatic and moody, and the villains can be genuinely kind of creepy. So I think if you do that, really create just a general Batman story, have a really cool facade. I mean, this could be like a soundstage house. I think this would be a really, really cool idea, but just because it's Batman, that's Warner Brothers, um, and if they're gonna ever bring Batman to the event. I doubt they'd ever do uh, the 1989 Tim Burton Batman, um, but it is a pipe dream for me for sure. And then the last question we have here is one that's going to segue into what's coming for this year. Um, is there anything non-theme park related you're really into that you could see yourself making into YouTube content? Um, I really love film. I, film is my first passion. Um, before theme parks, I love movies. Um, I grew up watching a bunch of bunch of movies. I love physical media, as you can see maybe behind me, I have some Blu-rays back there. I love physical media, I love movies and film and film history. And I try to incorporate that in the videos, um, but I really want to with uh, next year and years in, in the future, incorporate more film stuff. So maybe just videos on movies or how movies and theme parks kind of intersect, especially with Universal being a century old film studio. I think there's a lot of interesting things to be said of how like the movies influence the parks, the parks influence the movies. Um, but other than that, I really love comics too. I, that's why I love the Tribute to Terror so much because I love comics. And so maybe I'll make some comic related videos. I don't know. Um, it's really kind of just feeling out what people are interested in and uh, what I'm interested in at the time. If there's something specific I want to talk about because I make all my videos on like a feeling. I want to make videos that I feel connected to, that I feel like have to come out at a specific time. Um, like the 80s video, if you haven't seen it, right there on the cards, the 80s video. Um, I've been playing that video for over a year, but I would like to make videos on film and comics 
books, film history, connections, uh, I think it'll be really cool. But uh, yeah, speaking of videos that are coming, um, really what's going to be coming in 2024 is going to be more of what we did here in 2023. A lot of the same and more. I do want to go hard on HHN 33 and we love talking about HHN and that's not going anywhere. But also I want to talk about other theme parks, other haunts, talking about some of the lore behind that stuff, um, the history, but I also want to incorporate more vlogs, more just news videos like theme park news because there's a lot of stuff this year I didn't really get to talk about. Things like Minion Land, a lot about the new DreamWorks Land. I didn't really get to talk about that as much as I wanted to because I was going so hard for HHN. So it's really just finding a balance between the two types about theme parks and HHM because that's really what I want this channel to be. I want it to be all about the theme parks of the past, present, and future. It's in the banner after. More streams as well. I want to do a stream um, once every two weeks or at the at the very minimal uh, once a month because I really love doing live streams and uh, I love getting to talk to you guys. New parks, new experiences, new things to document and show you guys and of course uh, getting hyped for Halloween Horror Nights next year because I'm already hyped. Please let's drop some announcements announcements already. But yeah, uh, I want to thank you all for watching this video if you made it this far. Um, I know this is a different kind of video and I know some people may not be into that. Just want to hear me talk about Halloween Horror Nights, which is all good. That's going to be coming soon. I want to take January to really talk about some theme park stuff um, before we get into the craziness with Halloween Horror Nights. But if you enjoyed videos like this, please, please, please let me know. I know I spend a lot of time talking about me, but I would also like to get to know you. Damn. I know I spent a lot of time talking about me, but I would also like to get to know you in the comments below. Um, answer to some of these questions here if you have any specific thoughts or just things you want to chat about in the comments. I will be sure to read them and respond to them. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Take care, everybody. Oh, and Happy New Year, by the way.